you have your Bibles with you this morning, would you open them to the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew? Matthew chapter 24. And if you're able, will you stand out of respect to the reading of the Word of God? Matthew chapter 24. Jesus speaking. We will begin reading down at verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it or not, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive or lead astray the very elect. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Bow our heads. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Pray that you will speak to us from it, and for that we will thank you. Amen. You may be seated. The stage has pretty much been set now. The cast is just about all in place. Prophecy is leaping off the pages of our Bible. And what we have been seeing recently, none of it has caught the Lord off guard. It has all been prophesied, but it is just a warm-up for what is really coming. Jesus spoke of a day where there would be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to that time, nor shall ever be, he said. We are not living in that time right now. I've heard numerous people recently saying we're already there, we're living in that, that's what's happening. No, we're not. We're not living in that time yet. As a matter of fact, what we have been living through isn't even close to what Jesus said was yet to come. What Jesus described won't take place until after that great event called the rapture of the church has taken place. You don't want to be here to live through that day. So you need to get right with God now while you still can. And I mean really get right with God. No more messing around. No more playing church. No more being a half-hearted Christian. I mean praying through until you are trusting Christ as your Savior with all your heart, and then you're living for him as well. I mean praying through until you are to the point where you have forsaken all of your sins. I mean getting right with God so that you now live in your life by everything the Bible tells you to do not just following those parts that you like. That is what so many today who call themselves Christians are doing <coughs> instead of going all the way with the Lord. You'd better be ready to deal with what is ahead through the power of Christ working in you 
because the great reset is on its way. Great reset? What in the world is that, preacher? Uh, I've never, never heard that phrase before. Well, I'm not surprised. It is a new term that the global elites have now coined to describe the coming new world order. So if and when you hear it being used in the days ahead, don't think plans for the new world order have all gone away. They haven't. They've just given it a new name to try to throw you off. Now, when you consider that the mark of the beast, which will take place during those days of great tribulation that Jesus was talking about, will be mostly a financial mark that will control buying and selling, no one should be surprised that the great reset is being brought to us by the elites within the World Economic Forum. And isn't it interesting how all of a sudden there's a shortage of coins, with some places asking you to use the exact change or a credit card, and some banks now are even paying you to bring in your loose change. Linda was even asked this past week here locally when she paid with something or for something with cash if she wanted her change, mind you. If you want your change, what's behind all this? Well, it's very simple. It is one more step toward us becoming a cashless society so that every penny you spend will someday be able to be tracked and traced. But CNN this past week just called what I just said a conspiracy theory. Well, what else is new? Now, they launched this concept of the Great Reset at a virtual summit on June 3rd. But lots of stuff has been happening leading up to it. And it's interesting that on October 18th of last year, 2019, and make sure you get that date, October 18th, 2019, the World Economic Forum hosted an event in New York City along with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and John Hopkins University focusing on a high-level pandemic exercise simulating a global outbreak modeling what they called a fictional coronavirus months before the COVID-19 virus was released on purpose from a military lab in China. And lest you think I am speculating about any of that, that fact was confirmed to us this past week by a leading Chinese scientist and specialist on viruses named Dr. Li Meng Yan, who fled to the United States for fear that she would be killed for telling the truth about where COVID-19 came from. If I was her, I wouldn't consider myself too safe here in the United States either. The World Economics Reset page, or Forum's Reset page, and you can look it up, has links to everything concerning COVID-19, finding a vaccine, the media's role in COVID-19, 
Plus, strangely enough, they're also talking about global governance there. Climate change. LB, LGBTQ, I never get them numbers or the letters right. Inclusion. Sustainable development. And on and on it goes. Folks, what I'm telling you this morning is that all we have been seeing was planned from the COVID-19 virus to the Black Lives Matter riots to defunding the police to the coin shortage and on and on it goes. And the more you start to connect the dots, the more you will begin to realize that all that you are seeing is all tied together. Everything we've been experiencing is all a part of this great reset, and it's all driving us toward the same outcome, that being the resetting of the entire world to prepare people everywhere for the arrival of the one called Antichrist. That's how close he is to stepping onto the world stage. So if that's the case, how much closer must the rapture be that precedes him? The global elite that run things are trying to mask things now by calling it the Great Reset. But as I said, it's really nothing more than the same old New World Order in disguise. Second Timothy 3.1 declares, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I hope by now you see that Paul is speaking about the days that we are living in right now. If you believe that down the road, all of a sudden, things will get better and the things will go back to the old normal, well, then I won't be too surprised to hear that you believe in the tooth fairy as well. (laughs) There's a reason why gun sales have been going through the roof. Perilous times cause people to do that. Matter of fact, you can't hardly get a gun. And I'm certainly not against that. I only wish everyone that was rushing to get a gun to protect themselves was also reading their Bible and rushing to church as fast to get right with God through Christ. And if you have any doubts about what they want to do with our guns, just watch what was taking place this past week as the Attorney General of New York is trying to put the NRA out of business. Uh, David said in Psalm 77, verse 2, in the day of my trouble." I sought the Lord. Not a weapon, but I sought the Lord. He didn't need to seek a weapon. He already had one. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is saved. All across our country, at a time when crime rates are absolutely soaring and civil unrest is raging in major cities across the nation. As you know, funding for the police is being cut and in some places even totally eliminated. That will eventually have serious implications for every man, woman, and child. In America, the Minneapolis Police Department actually told people this past week that if they were held up in the streets of Minneapolis, 
that they should be prepared to give up their cell phone or their purse or their wallet without a fight. And what they were saying to their people is, nobody's going to be there to protect you. That would sure bring you comfort if you live in Minneapolis, wouldn't it? Now, I'm really glad I have a gun. More than one, of course. I hope I never have to use it on anything besides deer and squirrels. I'm also glad I live here in Rock Hill instead of Minneapolis or Seattle or some awful place like that. And I'm especially glad I have the Lord on my side to help me find my way through the perilous times that we are living in. Everywhere you look, people are angry and frustrated, and our society seems to be coming apart at the seams around us, which incidentally is just what the global elites want. And sadly, I'm afraid what we have experienced thus far is just the beginning and that even worse things lie ahead for us as we move into the fall. But lest we be fooled by what we are seeing, what we are seeing in these riots is not so much an attempt to throw off the authority of the police or even the authority of the government. <coughs> it's ultimately an attempt to throw off the rulership of God himself over mankind. Listen to the words of Psalm 2, verses 1 through 3. Why do the heathen rage? And why do the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Now, we know that is certainly what happened when Jesus came the first time. But just watch the news, and you have to admit that the heathen are raging in the streets of America once again. But the talk about breaking off the bands and casting away the cords, do not be fooled. It is not about racism at all. It's not about saying we will not have the police rule over us. What it's really about is in saying we will not have Almighty God rule over us. That's why Bibles are now being burned in the protests in Portland along with American flags. It is an expression of hostility toward the Judeo-Christian God and toward Judeo-Christian values. They are thumbing their nose at divine authority. And it is overt rebellion of the worst kind. The Great Reset is really about removing the authority of God over his world and removing the authority of God over the world and turning it over to Satan himself who will rule the new world order eventually through his man, the Antichrist himself. More and more speculation is about who that man will be. Just remember, 
I'm not making any saying anything for certain, but keep your eyes on Macron from France. He really looks like he could be a prime candidate. He went down. He was the first world leader to visit Beirut after that huge, almost like atomic bomb blast this past week. And you know what the people of Beirut did? Tens of thousands of them signed a petition to try to make Macron their leader. One country asking another country's leader to become their leader. Now just digest that a little bit and think of the implications of what that could mean. I don't know, but keep your eyes on it. Dr. Mike and Michael Brown recently wrote this. First they burned the federal building. Then they started burning the churches. Now they're burning the Bible. Rather than asking what is next, we should be asking who is next. The answer to that is the people who live by and for the God behind those Bibles that they are burning. Burning Bibles, think about this logically. Burning Bibles has absolutely nothing to do with protesting against police brutality. Think about that. What would burning a Bible have to do with protesting police brutality? But it is an attempt to dismantle all of Western civilization which incidentally was built upon the Bible. It is an attempt to upend centuries of freedom of religion that our forefathers all stood for and all shed their blood so that we might have. And that has to be accomplished, remember, that has to be accomplished for there truly to be a world government. America has to be brought down, and you are witnessing the bringing down of America right now in every way that you can imagine. And I just keep studying the Word of God. I just keep studying prophecy, trying somewhere to hopefully find America and what's coming in the days ahead. Can't find us. We're not there. Which means that somehow we're not going to be a major player in what takes place down the road. The Great Reset is moving forward. But I am looking forward to the soon coming day when Almighty God resets my feet in his heavenly home that he has prepared for me and for all who love the Lord. I don't want nothing to do with the great reset that is taking place here in the world. But I'm looking forward to the great reset where my feet leave this old world and I end up in heaven in the twinkling of an eye, up through the clouds, not only to meet my Lord, but to meet any loved ones and friends that have gone on behind or before me. And think about what a happy reunion that will be. Even if you didn't have a friend up in heaven right now or a loved one, just getting to see Jesus, just being with Jesus will make the trip worth your while. But in addition, there are those that are up there already rejoicing with him. And I can't wait to find out who all it is up there. I'm going to be 
I, I just look forward to that day when somebody's going to walk up to me in heaven and say, you're Daryl Nicklow, aren't you? I got saved listening to you on the radio 35 years ago over in Sharpsville or, or whatever it was. Or, and who knows who you might meet. You know, we're going to be surprised. There are going to be some folk there we don't think are going to be there. We're also going to be surprised there's going to be some folk missing who thought they were headed there but really weren't. And you know why they weren't? Because they never lived right. They professed Jesus, but they never lived like Jesus wanted them to live. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, but only he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And what more is there, the will of the Father, than to live by this book? So, folks, I challenge you, live by the book. Don't ignore what it said. Obey what Jesus told you to do. Stay away from the things Jesus told you to stay away from. Live right so that when that great reset in the sky takes place, you'll know when it's happening, a trumpet's going to sound, and you won't even have time to say hallelujah, because up through the clouds we'll be going. Won't it be wonderful? But it'll only be wonderful for those who truly love the Lord. Everybody else is going to be left behind to deal with this time of tribulation that Jesus said would be worse than anything that mankind has ever seen. Worse than what we're going through now. Worse than it was for the Christians under the Roman emperors. Worse than anything you can imagine. You don't want to be here to be a part of it. So get down to the business of living right now so that you can be a part of that great reunion in the sky. Let's stand. Bow your heads for a moment. You know, my friend, before we go, I just ask you to simply say to the Lord, Lord, if there's a reason, any reason, why I wouldn't be a part of that great reunion in the sky. Would you please show it to me so that I'm not deceived, so that I don't miss heaven, so that I can say there's not a doubt or a fear between me and my maker today. And if he shows you something, I pray you'll be man or woman or enough to repent of that thing, to change that thing, to stop that thing, so that you are truly living for Jesus. Is there anyone here this morning before we go? Everybody bow your head for just a moment. Anybody that I know I'm preaching to the choir mainly this morning, but anybody, by simply lifting a hand, would say to me, Preacher, please pray for me that I'll get it all together. And you know by now, I won't embarrass you or anything like that, but I will pray for you. Anybody like that? Thank you. Anybody else? Let's join together then and a closing word of prayer. Kenny, would you please dismiss us?